Hey guys, and welcome to my DIY channel. My name is Annalie, and let's get right into the video. For this first project, I wanted to use some of this scrap wood. This is some scrap plywood. You can see that it um, needs a little TLC, but it's perfect for what I needed it to be. So I went ahead and I used a wreath form and I traced out a circle and then I used my jigsaw to cut the circle out of this wood. This was perfect because this wood is not very heavy at all. Here is my circle, it's the perfect size. It's exactly what I wanted it. And then I went ahead and I got it all sanded down because like I said, it's a little weathered and so it needed some TLC. I also sanded the edges, which my battery died for. But you can see how thin this wood is right here. And so it's really lightweight. I went ahead and after I got it sanded, even though, and I also sanded the edges, you can kind of see the edges are a little bit rounded. I went ahead and using some ebony, or maybe it was espresso. Espresso? I, I used some stain and I went ahead and I got this circle stained. Once that was kind of dry, I went ahead and I used some painter's tape to tape this off. I purposely did not put the tape in the middle of the board because I didn't want it to be right in the middle. I wanted it to be a little bit off so that the top part was more like a two thirds to one third ratio. And then using some Waverly chalk paint in the color white, I went ahead and I painted the top part of this sign. This is actually a Pinterest inspired project so you guys may even know exactly what I'm making because I've seen this um, a couple of times on Pinterest but when I saw it I decided that I really really needed one of my own and I thought it was really cute plus I already had the scrap wood to go ahead and do this so this project didn't cost me hardly anything I did embellish it a little bit with some ribbon and some floral at the end so this project cost me about four dollars tops to make because I already had the vinyl and I already had the wood and the paint I just needed some floral picks from the Dollar Tree and some ribbon and then once that was dry I did want it to look just a little bit more rustic so I ran my sanding block over the white part just a little bit I didn't do this a lot I just kind of did this especially around the edges just to blend this a little bit Using a decal that I purchased from the Silhouette Design Studio, I purchased this Happy Holidays and I did it in the color white because there's white on top. And then I put this decal right on the stained part of the wood, right here, for my little sign. And then using some of this red burlap ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree, I went ahead and I made a very poofy red bow, which I absolutely love. Made a whole bunch of loops and then wrapped it with some wire and then pulled the edges, cut some dovetails, and then just kind of spread it out a little bit. And then I put some of this, like this really large Dollar Tree pick on the one side, put the bow on in the middle, and then that Dollar Tree pick on the other side. I love that little pick right there because if you look really close, you can see that there's a white pine cone in it. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's adorable. And it matches the white of the sign. It's perfect. It was meant to be. And then to add just a little bit more red to it to give it some more pop of color. Pull this red off with some glitz and glam so that I could dress it up just a little bit, make it fancy.
you are not new here, then you know how the hop works. If you are new here, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. It's really easy to do the hop. Basically, all you do is at the end of this video in the description box down below, there's a link down below for the video of the girl who was next in line for the hop. To complete the hop, at the end of each video, you just go down to the description box and click on the link, and it will take you full circle right back to Heidi Sambal. It is a really fun thing to do. You get a ton of inspiration, and these are some amazing girls. Also, mega bonus, there's also a giveaway. In order to enter the giveaway, all you have to do is leave a comment on each one of the girls' video within the hop. But we'd also love it if you guys would like the videos and subscribe. We'd love if you stay around, and I don't think you guys would be sad if you did. It's a super fun way to see a lot of videos and get a lot of inspiration, so I'll quit talking and let's get back into it. For this project, I went ahead and I used some wood that is the paint stick size. These are not actual paint sticks, but these are the exact same size as paint sticks. So if you guys wanna make this, it's perfectly fine to just grab those paint sticks. And these I have cut into nine inch by eight inch segments because we are gonna be making a little shadow box sign. After these were cut and sanded, I went ahead and I used some walnut stain for a lighter brown color and I went ahead and I got everything stained. And then using some hot glue, I went ahead and I glued them together. Not because they wouldn't give a permanent hold, but because I wanted them to hold together long enough for me to staple them together. And then once that was done, I went ahead and I put some staples in it to make my frame. And then I used some foam core board and I traced out this square piece so that I could use it as the backing of my frame. Then using some Christmas wrapping paper, I went ahead and I cut this down to size and using a glue stick, I went ahead and I glued that on. This actually held really well. I was really impressed with this glue stick. And then I glued it onto the back. Using this little ornament that you can get from the Dollar Tree, this little believe sign, it comes just like this. I went ahead and I glued some blocks to the back of it so that it could kind of come up off the sign a little bit and I went ahead and I glued that to the bottom. And then I used one of these Christmas bells that you can get at the Dollar Tree right now. They actually come in a pack of like eight, so this was really cheap. And I'm only using one. Um, this is a little DIY that is inspired by the movie The Polar Express where I'm sure most of you have seen it, but if not, there is a part where um, if you don't believe in Santa Claus, then you can't hear the bell ring, this little bell. So for those of you who have not heard that story, that's what this means. And so in order to hear the bell ring, you have to believe in Santa Claus. 
So that's why I put the words believe down there and then I'm just hanging this little bell up as a reminder to believe in Santa Claus and then you will hear the bell ring. Really quick, if you guys would like to, I do have an Instagram. Come over and connect with me over there. I would love to see you guys. Come say hi and show me what you made. Okay, using this free printable, I will have this link down below for you guys, but I got this free printable off of the internet and this is just the vintage looking notes for the song, the Christmas song, Oh Come All Ye Faithful. I went ahead and printed that off and then using this wood that you can get from Home Depot, it's textured and decorated really thin. I wanted to make a frame. I measured the sides of this so that I could cut this frame down to size. And then using my chop saw, I went ahead and I cut these down to size and made some 45 degree angles so that I could make it just fit really well. Once that was done, since this is really, really light and small, thin wood, I just went ahead and used my glue gun to glue this together. I actually may be going back over this, especially on the back with some more permanent glue. We'll have to see. And then I also wanted a little bit of that lighter brown color stain. So this is the color Walnut, and I went ahead and I got this stained as well. Cutting this down to size so that it would fit. I used one of these signs that you can get from the Dollar Tree. This was out in their summer section. I just went ahead and I cut this down to size to fit my printable. Using some wood glue, I went ahead and 
glued my paper onto the board. I heard once, I was taught by a craft store out of Utah that it's actually better for your paper and wrinkles less if you glue a piece of paper to wood using wood glue instead of Mod Podge. So it's good to use the Mod Podge on top to seal it, but if you guys want a little bit less moisture and a little bit less wrinkle and crinkle, then you're supposed to use wood glue to glue your paper onto wood. I've actually done this for years and I have found great success with it, so I keep doing it, but you guys are welcome to do it how you want. I just wanted to share that little tip. Using these clamps that you can get from the Dollar Tree over in like the utility section, I put these on so that I could get the board to glue to the frame. And then using my Silhouette Design Studio again, I downloaded, actually I purchased this from the store. It says, oh come let us adore him, because of course that's part of this song. And I wanted to put this on. This is actually the focus of my sign. I went ahead and put this on and I let everything dry. And once I was done with that, I went ahead and covered it with some Mod Podge on top so that you could seal it. And for some reason, I don't have any footage of me putting some of this floral on it, but I went ahead and just embellished it with a little bit of this red floral and a little poinsettia that you can get from the Dollar Tree. Let me know which one's your favorite and also do not forget about the giveaway Leave a comment down below for the giveaway and make sure that you go see each one of the girls in the hop With their links down below so that you can leave a comment on theirs to enter for the giveaway Make sure you leave a comment down below. Thank you guys for being here Please give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you are new and would like to stick around and we will get into what is quickly becoming one of my favorite parts of my channel the end segment, you guys. I am loving this. I am loving how much feedback you guys are giving me. You guys are inspiring me just as much as I'm hoping to inspire you. So you guys left a lot of comments. You really liked the end segment um, on my last video with the video that I linked down below. If you guys didn't get a chance to see it, I will also have it linked down below because there's so much that video. I'll probably talk about that video always and forever. It's called Life Lessons of a Third Grade Dropout. The one thing that I wanna talk about in his speech is there's a little part of the segment that he says, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Here it is again. The way you do anything is the way you do everything. I really had to think about that for a minute because I was like, how do I do everything? Am I kind in everything? Am I, do I try my best at everything or do I, do in some areas do I cut corners because I think this isn't that big of a deal so I'm gonna cut some corners and then how how easily can that become my all the time right how easily can that become everything that I do every single day so the way you do anything is the way you do everything is so true because if you think about it take a step back and evaluate your life and think about how you are doing things the way you do anything so for example with my YouTube channel right if I make a craft and I'm like oh man I just want to hurry and get this video up and on the internet I'm just gonna do a quick craft I don't care how it looks that reflects me that's a direct reflection of me and that 
mentality is way too easy to fall back on just because we're all busy. We're always busy, right? We're, when are we not going to be busy? Like we always love to say, I'll do that when I'm not busy. I'll be happy when I'm not busy. I'll be, I won't be stressed when I'm not busy. It doesn't work that way. We have to find that time. We have to make that time. We have to do it right every single time because it's like perfect, perfect practice makes perfect performance, right? So you don't want to just practice lazily thinking that the day the recital comes or the day the game comes or the day that whatever you're practicing for comes that you'll do it perfect, perfect on game day or perfect on recital day. That's not going to happen. It's only going to happen if you practice perfectly every single day. We can apply that to life. Practice to be the best you can be at life every single day. So anyways, let that sink in. Apply that to your life. That's my challenge for you guys this week is think about the way you do anything is the way you do everything. And also, if you get a chance, go and watch that video because it's amazing. Like it's, it's seriously, I watch that video all the time and I get something new from it every single time I watch it. Thank you guys so much for still being here at the end. I appreciate every single one of you and thank you for inspiring me. Thank you so much for those who are new and thanks for those who are coming back. And we will see you guys next time. Bye guys.